Hello and welcome to Wow Worship on Wednesday. We're really pleased to have you here with us this evening, uh, wherever you're joining us from. And uh, this week's message is based on the Bible passage uh, from Psalm 121. And it's with a title of When the Going Gets Tough. It's both a sharing of personal experience, but also connects really well to something that we're uh, running at the moment at Head and Methodist Church, which is uh, the Start course. And we're doing it as part of our new Cafe Church uh, worship once a month. Um, and it's a journey that we're going on as a, a church family and congregation together. So uh, today's, uh, as I said, today is based on Psalm 121 and particularly sort of on, on um, two areas of, of, of personal experience. Uh, but before we go on to that, um, we'd like to uh, start with uh, a worship song to join together. And um, it's one with a particularly uh, strong uh, favourite of my own, but also relevant to, uh, to, to today, and it's And Can It Be?
Our God in prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we welcome you into our presence with our hearts, ears and eyes open to receive your love and peace through your word. Lord Jesus, may your spirit be part of our worshipping, our praying and our praising. Creator God, you have clothed this world in beauty. From the morning mist dissolving into a sunny day to the splendid isolation of a mountain peak. From the flowers of the field in all their colourful radiance to the butterfly emerging from its chrysalis. All speak of your artistic vision and creativity. We pray for those unable to see your beauty around them. From the visually impaired to those in desperation the hungry, the homeless and the marginalised. We pray that they may see the glory of your creation through your love, bringing them hope of brighter days ahead. Saviour God, you are our prop in times of trouble, always there to give us the strength and support we need. You are reliable, dependable and trustworthy. Come into our rescue when difficulties arise. Sometimes, in the depth of our despair, we can forget to turn to you. We try to go to learn, but we can't. Forgive us, Lord, for the times we forsake you and don't turn to you for the help we need. We thank you, our God and King, for being ever ready to forgive our shortcomings. Your love and compassion for us is steadfast and sure at all times. Gracious God, let us learn from your Son, Jesus Christ, how to follow in your footsteps, to walk beside you in all we do, knowing you will protect and guide us. We offer these our prayers into your keeping through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Let's join in saying the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So for anyone who hasn't uh, been with us or doesn't know about the Start Course, it's, uh, it's a programme devised um, by a team of uh, interdenominational Christians and it's uh, both for people who are new to faith um, or also maybe uh, anybody who's been a regular church goer but uh, wants to like ask questions or you know reconnect with um, some of the questions that very often come up and it's difficult to answer. So as a church family in Hedden, since the pandemic, pandemic, we've seen our congregation change quite considerably, um, and we've been really pleased to welcome a number of new people into church, either coming from other churches, joining us through Messy Church, or those who may have connected us with us through our online services. So we felt it was a really good time together to build together as a church family again and for those who are new to either the church or to faith to be able to share and to ask questions and up to now it's been a great experience. One week we talked about our relationship with God and what we thought God was like. It was quite a hard question to answer and um, it's, it's something that we sort of um, that we all have our own interpretations. One question that was put to everyone was, if, you, if someone just came up to you and asked you, do you believe in God? And you answered yes. How would you evidence it? How do you know God? 
it is through this that I thought about my own personal experience um, and it was really a great you know, sort of, um, chance to really just reflect on that um, a, a little bit more. So it was through this that they, uh, the subject of, and the title of When the Glam Gets Tough very much came to mind and it was during one of the sessions that um, you know, really uh, um, reflected on that. And so, um, it, you know, it was things like the questions were kind of, how do you know God? Is it through this that, and it's through this that I thought about my own faith and relationship with God and how the title um, actually enabled me to be more assured in my faith. Um, just to give a little bit of background, um, I was brought up in the Methodist Church and we used to attend White Methodist Church as a child and as I grew up. Um, I was married at White Methodist Church and I'd always been part of, of the church and the church life. Um, had I been challenged um, maybe during that in terms of sort of an understanding of my faith and possibly not so. It was comfortable um, but there were two occasions when life was really tough in different situations and it helped me realise at that time that I wasn't alone. The first um, one of those was something probably quite extreme but um, I had the opportunity to climb Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania in Africa um, and that was in 2010. It was something that came through um, an opportunity with work. Um, I work in the travel industry and we do a lot of charitable work and work to support um, people both in the UK and overseas. And there was a chance to uh, go on a charity trek up Kilimanjaro to raise schools, uh, raise money for um, girls' education and schools in Tanzania where very often they get very little opportunity to receive a proper education at all. It's not something that um, I had the slightest um, inkling or thought that I would um, ever undertake and really it wasn't something that was an ambition of mine but when the chance came to go and gradually as more and more people signed up I just sort of felt look this is a once in a lifetime opportunity you must take it. Um, one of the hardest things to, um, to be able to cope with when climbing um, something like Mount Kilimanjaro is the altitude. Kilimanjaro is the uh, fourth highest mountain in the world and uh, you go to over 19,000 square foot. And so um, training in this area was obviously going to be really difficult because there's uh, very few heights or even steep hills and things around. But um, we had quite a strict regime and a group of us flew out to, uh, to Nairobi in Kenya, then onwards to Kilimanjaro and after a really comfortable night in a lovely African lodge, we set off on our trek uh, to, to climb, which was going to take us seven days. And really during that time, um, you went through a whole range um, of emotions and experiences and um, feelings of um, being at times very, feeling very unwell, other times feeling really uplifting and really positive. Um, it was uh, going through, I would say, all sort of climates and seasons in, in a whole week, starting from very tropical, um, and then as we moved higher and higher, the landscape became more barren and more bleak, and had really sort of lightning to, you know, watching something from a movie that was like as if you were in you know um, on the moon or you know in space it was it was really became very bleak and during that time um it really you got no mobile signal at all you were very cut off but you were with a group of people and um, that you know you you uh, had a very strong bond with and, and built up you know a really close relationship and needed to support each other all throughout the trek um we, we camped each night um, sometimes really cold, it got down to minus 10 at night, but actually very warm in the day. But as you got further and further up, it did become harder. And while you're in a, a group together, sometimes you know, it became difficult to stay. We were all going at a different pace and there were times when you did feel very alone. And um, we were all appointed a particular uh, guide to walk with us and to track with us. My guide was called Frank and he was very much there sort of by my side and by others to help us and you know make sure that we didn't sort of fall or we didn't you know struggle to uh, to be able to to keep up with with everybody else 
And there were many times during the trek then I felt I wanted to give up. I didn't want to, to carry on. And yet at the same time, the thought of being left there on that mountain, pretty much on your own and leaving the group was quite frightening. So you just kept going and kept going. Um, whilst, I was, uh, whilst I was there, I was aware as well, those of you who know me, that I'm a very big uh, OKR rugby supporter. And um, there was a playoff match taking place between Hull KR and Hull FC. And the last bit of mobile signal I received was to find out that the, uh, the, the Hull KR were winning at half time. Um, but then I didn't hear anything else for three or four days. So my nights were sort of racked with trauma, trying to wonder whether and dreaming that whether they would have won or what may have happened. Uh, but nothing came through. So uh, after six nights, we got to base camp, which was a very sort of, I would describe as quite a bleak location. Um, it was full of rocks and we looked up really pretty, frightening sort of sight to see Kilimanjaro and the last sort of hall to be able to, to, to get up there overnight, which was done um, really late on, um, very late on. You set off at 11 o'clock at night and had to arrive there by, by sunrise. And it was at that point then that, you know, you really did start to sort of think this is, this is, this is quite a frightening thing. We had to go, we went to bed early, obviously we're getting up and suddenly, um, from having absolutely no mobile signal at all, um, I received two texts through and um, it really seemed sort of quite remarkable that I suddenly received communications from, you know, what appeared to be out of nowhere. One was um, from um, was from a friend and it was the Hulk AR score, which I was so relieved to find out that actually Hulk AR had won and that um, we'd got through to the next round of the playoffs, which I was delighted about. And the other one was a, a text that came through from um, our former minister, and there was my minister at the time, Vivian Smith. And it was just purely um, a text from her and it was with the Bible, the Bible passage that we refer to today. And it, it, it just uh, came through and, and said from Vivian, I lift my eyes to the hills where my, where my help comes from. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber or sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. God bless Kevin, Viv. And it was at that point then where I realised that I wasn't alone when I was doing this. I'd been left behind by the rest of the party not because people didn't care for me, but because we just all were trying to struggle to get to the, the top of the mountain at our own pace. And it really um, gave me the motivation and it gave me the strength to be able to keep going when it had been so easy to give up. I did make it to the top. Um, quite spectacularly, I actually was really unwell when I got there and ended up having to come down on a stretcher, but I did make it. And, you know, I was so proud of being able to do that, however hard it was. But the thing, you know, the thing that really sort of was the, the tipping point for me was knowing that I wasn't there. And however fear, uh, fearful I was, and um, frightened I was, I wouldn't give up because I wasn't alone. And the second time, um, really, when describing about um, things being been tough um, and at times when you know that God is there with you um, was a, 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 point, a low point in life and um, without going into lots of details or anything but it was a point where I just wanted to I needed to uh, to get away for a bit and um, I went for a walk on the Humber Bank uh, with my dog Max and um, in my head I was singing lots of different songs kept coming into my mind and uh, there were two particular songs that as I was walking along um, quite upset and feeling really low that there were two songs that stood out to me and I was singing them at the top of my voice as I was sort of walking along. Anybody that would have seen me would wonder what on earth I was doing. 
the first one was um, was and can it be and that's the song uh, and the work for him that has been known to so many of us um, but also has had so many strong connections to me personally through my upbringing in times with MAYC and with family um, and you know it's one of the songs that really is uh, you know so so dear to me now and the other one was a oh, love that will not let me go and that was a, a, a song that again something that is very doesn't make very emotive and very sad song but also with such deep meaning and so I've been singing those um, in my head all during the week and on Sunday on the Sunday I was going to to church and I got a message from uh, Steve Clayton who was preaching that Sunday and Steve asked me if I would do a reading um, and when I got to, to, to church there was he gave me the notes Steve does a little note and I still have it with the uh, with the order of service and um, and when I had a look at when uh, I was to do the reading um, I think it was between the second and third hymn um, prior to the reading was the hymn a love that will not a love that will not let me go and afterwards was and can it be Steve had no idea that these had been the songs that I've been singing and I've been so connected to so strongly but it made it all the more personal to me that it was Steve who was a good friend of mine but also I knew then that again where I was feeling so low that that was you know God was speaking to me directly and you know through um, at times when you may feel low or may feel hurt that actually you know that was translated through to so really a message there that I knew it was there. So as it happened, I actually didn't do the reading because I found it quite difficult to do so. And I remember Christine Hughes stepped in um, and, uh, and, and did the reading for me. But it was really these two things that when we'd had the question, when we were at church doing the start class, and if somebody said to you, you know, do you believe in God? And then if you had to evidence it so often, it's very difficult to be able to do that. But, you know, I felt these two really particular instances that came much further into life, not, you know, because I've been brought up in the church, but specific things that happened, not always spectacular, just small things, but small things through friends and through people that I was close to that resonated with me and actually felt that God was speaking directly to me. And so I suppose that's really the message that I wanted to share uh, on today's WOW service is um, um, sharing together is, you know, that time, that affirmation where suddenly, you know, you may feel that message coming through to you much more strongly. And I hope that by sharing these stories that you'll think about that more, um, you know, in a time when that may, you know, has happened for you or may still happen in the future. So thank you for sharing uh, this time together. Um, and we'll now uh, actually share together the song, Oh Love, That Will Not Let Me Go. Thank you. <laughs>